Hello everyone this is part 2 of what if Naruto made the ultimate sacrifice, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. Naruto strode through the streets of Kanoa as the people rushed around completing the daily tasks. He had after a few hours gotten used enough to the seal placed on him by Jiraiya that he was capable of walking without feeling too much of a strain on his body. He still couldn't run, as at his first attempt he ended up s his foot into the ground too hard and injured his knee for a brief period of time. The injuries he had sustained due to the rigorous training had now healed up enough so that he didn't look as he had just been beaten half to death. The sea had cleared and his nose was in a better condition so that it didn't look disfigured. Before Jiraiya had left there was another interesting development as he found that the scroll that the Yondime had left him also held a special three-pronged kunai sealed inside. The kunai looked different from the normal kunais he was used to and it was also heavier. Jiraiya had told him that the kunai was made specifically for this technique and was obviously the only one left. Due to this information Naruto had decided he would get the owner of the weapon store to duplicate at least another additional 50 kunais like the one currently in his pouch. He decided to have this done as soon as possible lest he didn't have the time required for it later. He knew that learning the Yondime's prize technique would be an extremely difficult task. He carried on walking through the streets receiving a mixture of looks from the residents of Kanoa. Some looked at him with appreciation whereas others who still couldn't understand the difference between him and his prisoner had an aura of disgust radiating off them. He opened the door to the weapons shop resounding in a high-pitched chime alerting the store owner that someone had entered the store. The blonde genin looked at the store with awe as he realized that it had changed largely over the past few years. This was the first time he visited the store after his return to Kanoa from his training trip. He looked to the counter to see a familiar kunoiki with a smile plastered across her face giving him a small wave before addressing him. Ohio Naruto-kun, what brings you here? Ten Ten was looking directly at the blonde shinobi who was currently standing at the entranceway of the shop. He walked towards her giving her a greeting while he had his usual foxy smile across his facade. You work here. Hi. When I'm not training, I'm learning craftsmanship from Tusan. He said the best way would be to work here with him and he would teach me alongside learning how to care for the shop. She twisted a kunai in her hands whilst engaging in the conversation. The younger shinobi of the two gave a small laugh, that explains how you manage to get all those weapons. A normal person would go bankrupt. The kunoiki smiled, so what would you like? Naruto put his hand into his pouch withdrawing the three-pronged kunai and put it onto the counter, I need another 50 kunai like this one. Ten Ten picked up the kunai and began to survey it turning it around in her hand checking its weight and balance. I don't think we have any other kunai like this. You don't. Ten Ten looked a little shocked at his statement. I need you to make me another 50 kunai like that one. Ten Ten gave him a nod, I understand. She retreated to the back of the store leaving Naruto to observe his surroundings. The blonde looked at the various ornaments littered around the store. There were an assortment of shinobi tools ranging from such items like food pills and shuriken to exploding tags and various types of bombs which differed from gas to light. However two weapons in particular caught his eye. They were twin blades of katanas, no doubt to be used in conjunction with other. The Jinchuriki started to contemplate on his Kei's no Yaiba Jutsu and how he could possibly modify it. He never realized Ten Ten walk in from the rear of the shop with an older man who was now holding the kunai that Naruto attained from Yondime's scroll. The older man looked at the blonde before giving a small chuckle alerting the said shinobi of his presence, long time no see Naruto, something caught your eye. Naruto looked at the old man with smile of his own, not really. He walked towards the counter again before he was right in front of it. So will you be able to make more? The old man laughed before his expression turned into a more serious one, of course. This is not the first time that I have been asked to duplicate such a kunai. There used to be a shinobi that came here who would ask for the same thing. He gave Naruto a knowing look all the while his daughter looked on trying to understand what the two were talking about. How long will it take? 
I need them done as soon as possible. It's important. Do you think you will be able to afford this, Naruto? The craftsman's question was simple and resulted in Naruto placing 25,000 yen on the table in front of the older man's eyes. The older man gave him a smile before handing him 5,000 yen back. I'll give you a discount since it'll be my personal honor to make a kunai like this again. If you are going to use this kunai for what I'm assuming then I will have to craft them personally. It is important that the kunais have no faults. Come back in two weeks and I'll have them ready for you. Naruto thanked him before heading out of the shop leaving a happy craftsman and a curious young kunoiki. Ten Ten looked at her father eager to receive an answer from him, why is the kunai so important? The old man looked at his daughter, the only other man to ask me to make this kunai was the yondime himself. He walked to the back of his shop leaving his stunned daughter behind. Ten Ten was shocked beyond comprehension and looked towards the door where Naruto had left moments before and a small smile graced her face. XXXXXXXXXXX. Sakura had been a Chunin for some time now and even though she had more administrative duties such as sorting the godime's paperwork and helping in handing out assignments she had never taught a class of eager wannabe ninjas. She stood at the center of a loud class wherein the students shouted and laughed causing an absurd amount of noise. She never realized teaching was this hard and now understood why her fellow Chunin companion Shikamaru would always complain about it being troublesome. She tried to collect the building anger inside her however she was failing resulting in her having a large outburst, S-H-A-N-N-A-R-O. Shut the hell up. The class of children no older than 10 looked at one of their substitute instructors with shock and fear and quieted down instantly. One of the young boys ran behind Kakashi trying to find protection in the form of the masked man who had stayed laid back throughout the morning engaged in reading the yet to be released Ikaraikula that he had received from Naruto as a present. He averted his lazy eye from his book to look at the pink-haired girl who was seething with anger, Sakura, maybe you should calm down. The kids are terrified. The medic nin looked at Kakashi trying her utmost to calm her currently volatile state. You know I'm not the only one who's supposed to be teaching these kids. You two are meant to help out as well. Sasuke who was leaning back against a wall a few feet across from Kakashi with his arms folded across his chest opened his previously shut eyes before addressing his fellow teammate. It was your idea to leave the more practical part of teaching to Kakashi sensei and me. You said you would be able to handle the rest. Sasuke stared at the pink haired kunoiki not buckling under the death glare he was receiving from her. I know what I said but that doesn't mean you can't help out even a little. Sasuke had a smirk across his face whilst Sakura attempted to speak again she was interrupted by Kakashi, he's right Sakura. Like we agreed, you handle explaining about chakra whilst I and Sasuke will teach them about shurikens and the use of exploding tags. Sakura gave up on convincing her fellow shinobis and turned back to the students before Kakashi returned to reading his orange book giving small perverted giggles every now and again. Sasuke remained against his wall as stoic as ever before a small smile crept across his face. You would have enjoyed seeing Sakura like this Naruto, what exactly are you doing Dobe? Sakura taught the children the basics of chakra use whilst they listened not daring to speak out of line or become inattentive as they feared another outburst from the beautiful yet deadly medic. An hour passed by before Sakura had completed her part in teaching and turned to Sasuke as it was his turn to address them in the use of Shuriken before Kakashi would explain about the uses of exploding tag. The kunoiki sat down before the black-haired Uchiha made his way to the front of the class. He looked at the class who had erupted into bouts of conversation yet again before looking back towards his kunoiki teammate who had an evil glint in her eyes. Sasuke reached into his pouch withdrawing several shuriken before throwing them at the students' desks. They landed on several desks instantly reducing the noise of the class to silence. Sakura jaw was hitting the ground before looking towards her perverted sensei expecting him to reprimand the Uchiha, he can't do that. The children must be. She never had the chance to finish her sentence as a young girl quickly spoke, wow. That was so cool. Sakura had to stop herself from falling over as Sasuke had a victorious smirk spread across his face. Sakura couldn't believe what had just transpired in front of her leaving her even more confused on how to handle teaching. Shanaro. What the hell? XXXXXXXXXX. The container of the QB walked towards the Hockage Tower to speak with the Godime as she had requested of him by sending a messenger bird in the earlier hours of the morning. 
he stopped upon seeing the grandson of the past Sandime staring up at the Hockage Monument. He knew the younger ninja was staring at the face of the Sandime in particular. He walked up beside the younger boy and placed a hand on his shoulder. Konohamaru looked startled at first before seeing who it was. Naruto spoke first, you miss him a lot, don't you? The blonde shinobi stared at the monument alongside his younger companion. Konohamaru sighed before adorning a more serious expression. A ninja must not show any emotions. Naruto listened to the young genin whom he had come to consider as a younger brother. Hey, there's nothing wrong with showing emotions. I miss him too. We're supposed to be tools that don't have any feelings. Ebisu sensei says that whoever breaks the rules in the shinobi world is trash. Naruto looked at the smaller boy before addressing him. We're not just tools Konohamaru. We have feelings, happiness, and sadness. That is what makes us human. A person must be able to realize the difference between right and wrong. One who breaks the rules in the shinobi world is trash but, whoever abandons their friends is worse than trash. The bonds we have with our precious people are what give us true strength. Protect and cherish such bonds at whatever the cost. The Sarutobi looked at the blonde absorbing all the wisdom he received from him. Konohamaru held a high respect for Naruto as he had been the first one to acknowledge him for who he was. The older shinobi had always helped him whenever he had needed it. A genuine smile spread across his face, Arigato, Naruto Naichin. I need to train hard and prove myself worthy of entering the Chunin exams in two months. I want the old man to be proud of me. I'm sure he would be proud of you. You're going to be a great ninja, Konohamaru. I just don't want to fail him. I want to prove that I'm worthy of being his legacy. The worry and gloom was evident in his voice. The strongest weapon a shinobi has is the will to believe in himself. You would be surprised what one can accomplish when he wills himself to. Konohamaru looked at the blonde, have faith in yourself and try your hardest. He gave his trademark foxy smile to his smaller friend before ruffling his hair and heading towards the Hockage Tower. A warm feeling swept through the younger boy making him happy. Arigato Naichin. XXXXXXXXXXX. Deodara and Toby were currently heading west towards the Country of Lightning. The two Akatsuki members jumped through the river dividing the border whilst remaining alert of their surroundings. They knew that due to their recent exploits in capturing Jinchurikis and Bijuas as well as Deodara's attack on Sunagaku resulted in the other countries having higher security than usual. Deodara, already in a foul mood from Toby's constant questions, was ready to unleash hell on his next opponent. He ran as fast as he could whilst desperately trying to ignore his companion's constant muttering. Hey, senpai, I've got a serious question for you. The orange mask-wearing criminal asked his blonde partner with a hint of curiosity in his voice. Deodara scoffed before replying, You said that ten minutes ago before asking me whether orange was the best color for your mask. Deodara collected his building anger before running along the edge of the river and jumping into the trees. No, this time it's concerning the meeting we had a while ago. Deodara's ears perked to the words of Toby as his curiosity was piqued. I've been thinking about it for a while now but I can't seem to figure it out. Deodara looked back at Toby giving him a nod as a go-ahead to explain further. Toby hastened his pace so that he was running alongside his partner, Zetsu Senpai brought back the rings of Itachi, Kisum, Hidden and Orokimaru. However he also gave an analysis on the QB brat's skills. This means that he was there when the others were fighting but he didn't involve himself in the fight. If he did then the others most likely wouldn't have D and they would have succeeded in the Jinchuriki's capture. I know Zetsu Senpai doesn't trust anyone except himself but it seems out of character for him not to assist fellow members when we're working towards a common goal. Deodara instantly stopped his movement contemplating this new piece of information. He didn't understand how he managed to overlook such details. You're right yeah. Toby became surprised at his blonde companion's admittance. He would usually expect to get reprimanded in some form. Deodara continued with a pensive expression on his face, there's definitely something wrong yeah, he paused for a few minutes, we should remain cautious of the others. The leaf shinobi being in Orokimaru's lair is something we wouldn't normally overlook. We usually make sure that our plans go ahead without many problems. It almost seems that Itachi, Kissam and Hidden were sent to the death yeah. Toby couldn't believe what was transcending before his eyes. He gave his partner a nod before speaking, one last question senpai. 
Jayadara looked back towards the newest member of Akatsuki. You really think that green wouldn't look better on the mask? A swift scream echoed throughout the forest. XXXXXXXXXXX. Naruto opened the door between him and the Hokage's office. He released a heavy sigh before walking in. He hadn't seen the woman he had come to consider as a mother for a few days now. The words of his pervert sensei were still heavy on his mind. The blonde knew that he should tell the older woman about his condition but found it hard to break the news to her. He looked at the godaim who seemed to be observing him closely with keen eyes. The young genin gave her a large smile, soon at Barkin, what did you call me for? The hockage cleared her throat flushing away any anger and controlled the twitch in her right eye at being called an old lady. Even though Naruto used the name in all of their encounters, she still couldn't get accustomed to the fact. I was going to personally ask you about your health and whether you were ready to take missions with your team again. Naruto grew nervous as he began to think that she may know. He put on a nonchalant act, why do you ask that? Soon it leaned back in her chair, Jiraiya told me you were still feeling the effects from your fight with the summoned Yondime. Naruto tried to determine whether he should tell her the truth but opted to lie instead, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. Although I must ask that I am put off any further missions for the next few weeks. He knew that he needed to dedicate as much time as he could towards his training. The Hokage raised one of her eyebrows at the younger boy's request. She knew that it was greatly out of character for the genin to refuse missions let alone ask personally to be put off them or a while. Why may I ask do you want that? Naruto began scratching the back of his head trying to quickly come up with a suitable excuse, hey hey, I just wanted to take a break from the work. A vacation would do me good. Sunad looked at the boy from head to toe, is that so? Do you care to explain how it seems that you've been training even though you want a break from work? Ah, a shinobi must always remain fit. He eagerly waited to see whether his reply had worked. Sunad gave him a nod confirming his request. The young blonde made his way to the exit, Naruto, the Jinchuriki stopped at hearing his name called. The older woman's tone was soft like that of a caring mother. Would you lie to me? Naruto's hand unconsciously moved towards the necklace that he had received from the god I'm clutching it between his hands. He felt the guilt build within him knowing that what he was doing was wrong, I'm sorry, I already have. He turned to face her, his eyes showed the sorrow contained within them. The hockage was standing also, I didn't want to upset you. Sunad began to think about the various meanings that his words could have held but she knew what the blonde was talking about in particular. She felt hurt inside, you lied about your health to me didn't you? You're far from fine. She looked at the boy who was now facing the floor. How bad is it? She waited for an answer from the demon container, Naruto, look at me, please, how bad? The blonde looked at her showing the few tears flowing down his face, I'm so sorry Sunid Barkin. The meaning behind his words hit her like a ton of bricks. She grabbed her chest feeling her heart aching like it had never done before. The deaths of her younger brother and lover had a profound impact on her. Her heart had had become cold and she held undying hatred towards her home village. However an encounter with the hyperactive blonde had changed her. He had melted the ice surrounding her heart and made her accept the embrace of living for the future again. The tears flowed down her face as she couldn't believe what she was hearing. Until I become Hockage, I will not de- she remembered his words when he had put his life at stake to protect her from harm. She tried her hardest from keeping her voice from breaking, no, tell me this is a joke, what about your dream? Naruto looked at the older woman who was now crying openly. This was exactly what he wanted to avoid doing to her. He knew that she was hurting deeply inside and it pained him to see her like this. Some dreams can't be made to come true. He walked towards the woman whom he considered a mother, please don't cry. The older woman quickly pulled him into an embrace now crying harder soaking his shirt. He put his arms around her returning the hug, I have accepted my fate but I'm not going to wallow in my misery. This was something bound to happen at one time or another. Soon it pulled back a little controlling herself, but your future. It's alright, I'm happy to be here with my friends. He paused before continuing, soon it barkin, I want you to stay as you are. The people of this village need a strong leader like you. You give them hope. No matter what I do in the future, promise me you won't lose faith. 
The godime began to think about what the blonde may be planning but she had trust in him. I believe you will do the right thing and I promise you will protect this village with my life. The two gave each other a heartwarming smile before the older woman gave him a K. He remembered Aruka's words allowing one last teardrop to fall from his cerulean eyes. Many people de in missions and wars. They de in easy and surprisingly simple ways. Sakura stepped out of the shower with a towel wrapped around her body. The window to her room was open letting the wind blow into her room giving a cool breeze. She walked towards her wardrobe before adorning clothes suitable for sleeping in. She sat in front of her mirror before fixing up her hair. It had been a week since the newly reunited Team 7 had begun to perform their missions. Most of the missions assigned to them included administrative duties and helping the godime with her paperwork. The hawkage had seemed extremely different lately as it was quite apparent to the pink kunoiki that she had some big issues dwelling on her mind, not that Sakura knew what they were. She was intrigued as to what could have resulted in the sudden change in behavior for her mentor. Team 7 itself didn't feel as it should have due to the notable absence of a certain hyperactive blonde. Neither of the members of the team had seen Naruto for over a week now. His usual liveliness and merriment was being missed heavily by Sakura as she realized how dull and boring it could become at times. Although she and Sasuke had tried to locate him on several occasions they failed terribly. They had checked in on his apartment however he was never in whenever they went. The only comfort she felt was from knowing that he was still regularly visiting the ramen stand for his monstrous meal devouring and from being told by the owner that he was happy and cheerful as always. The godime herself had reassured her that everything was fine but Sakura found herself disbelieving of her words. She had finished tying her hair with a ribbon and looked at the recent team picture that they had taken after rescuing Sasuke and defeating Orokimaru. She picked it up and observed it closely. Naruto was standing in the middle with a large smile plastered across his face with one of his hands in the victory sign while his other was wrapped around Sasuke's neck strangling him a little much to the Uchiha's chagrin. Sakura herself was looking at the two laughing while Kakashi had stood behind his team. The only thing notifying him of his smile was the form his eye had taken. She had enjoyed that day immensely as it had been the first day that they had all spent together after such a long time. A smile spread across her pretty face as she felt the warmth inside her spread. On the other hand she had also noticed that Naruto seemed to grow more distant from his team not much later after that day. The blonde became increasingly tenser and seemed to be mulling over things. The return of her black-haired team and reunion of their team was something she had wished for over two years. However her love for the Uchiha had largely diminished over the years and she found that she wasn't as attracted to the stoic team like she used to be. She had become more open around him and acted much like her usual self instead of trying to please him with each of her minor actions. She lied down into the warm confines of her blanket whilst staring at the ceiling. So much had happened to their team that it was amazing that they had survived. Sasuke had returned which brought her tremendous happiness however she was still worried about her blonde teammate. The organization of Akatsuki was still on the prowl even though they had lost three members. She had tried her hardest to find out the objective behind the Akatsuki capturing all the Bijuas but she couldn't find a grain of information that could help her. The organization itself was shrouded in mystery as the only known information about them was that they consisted of a group of S-class missing nin who were capturing the tailed beasts. The power of the tailed demons was something that had scared her immensely as she had witnessed Naruto unleashing some of the terrifying chakra of the Kyuubi which was known to be the strongest Bayu. She couldn't forget the sight she had witnessed when Naruto's desperation had him unleash enough chakra that he transformed into a six-tailed miniature form of the Kitsune. The spectacle was something that nobody present would forget as the blonde's appearance changed radically. However Sakura's fear was largely overwhelmed by the concern and worry she had for her blonde friend. She wanted more than anything to somehow stop him and help him but she couldn't. The pink-haired girl found that her cheeks had become wet from droplets of tears from reliving the experience again. The revelation that Naruto was the container of the Kyuubi had showered him in a new light to the Kunoiki. She felt great admiration for the shinobi as she realized how painful and lonely his existence must have been. Yet he had endured it and persevered never giving up hope and always attempting to cheer others up. She couldn't help but feel that she didn't know the real Naruto. Had it all been a facade? What was behind the mask?
she finally realized that she wanted to find out and help him in any way possible before drifting to a peaceful slumber. XXXXXXXXXX. Jiraiya was currently at Kanoa's bathhouse mounted in a tree peeking and admiring the voluptuous curves of the women currently bathing whilst hidden under the shadows. He had a small amount of drool emanating from the corners of his mouth whilst he gave small giggles every now and again. Due to his intense concentration pertaining to his research, he failed to recognize the presence of a blonde woman looking at him indifferently from the ground below. How did I know that I would find your perverted ass here? The rhetorical question caught the frog hermit's attention as he looked towards the person interrupting his peaking session. He felt fear rush through the core of his being as he realized that the godime was standing a few feet from the base of the tree he was currently occupying. He had received a few beatings from the large busted woman for his perverted sessions of peeking at the bath houses. He knew that soon it greatly despised perverts and wouldn't hesitate to once again beat him into oblivion since he had been caught red-handed. He began to wave his hands in front of him, ah, soon it I can explain. You see, the pervert was interrupted from his droning. I don't care, we need to talk. Soon it looked directly into the eyes of her ex-teammate not blinking. Saying Jiraiya was shocked would be an understatement as he couldn't understand why he wasn't feeling the woman's wrath. He then noticed the distinct look of sadness etched deep within her eyes. Okay. He jumped towards the blonde's side before the two of them began to walk away from the bathhouse. Jiraiya decided to break the silence, I'm guessing he has told you. Soon it released a sigh, how long has it been since you knew? Jiraiya had a serious expression, the day of the celebration. He turned to see that the Sunid was currently staring at the ground. Do you know where he is? The blonde woman was eager and curious as to the Genin's whereabouts. He's probably at his training ground. I was going to go there myself later on but guess I'll take you there now. Sunid gave the white-haired pervert a nod before they headed towards Naruto's position. XXXXXXXXXXX Naruto was currently sitting under the shade of a large tree with numerous scrolls littered around his position. It had been a week since he implemented the gravity training and today was his day for relaxation. The seal was currently inactive and he found himself appreciating the rest his muscles were having. The seal had helped tremendously as Naruto found himself faster and more agile than he had ever felt before. He was more than twice his original speed. He also realized that his muscles had become a lot more defined and he felt a lot stronger physically. The seal had done an excellent job however it had been a hellish week as his Taju cage bunch and training was also affected by the seal. He still couldn't run at his maximum speed with the seal activated. This caused conundrums for the clones that were doing the chakra control training as they couldn't get a running start to climb the waterfall. However on the whole his training had gone really well. The clones even with the added handicap of the gravity seal had still managed to reach halfway up the waterfall. Naruto knew that it would only be a matter of time before he'd be capable of traveling the full length of the waterfall. However due to the seal some of the clones would be dispelled as they lost their footing and fell into the plunge pool below with resonating impacts. The second group had completed their objective successfully as Naruto was now able to mentally communicate with the QB whilst remaining aware of what was happening around him. The QB himself wasn't too happy with being annoyed by the blonde hence Naruto hadn't tried to talk with the demon since the first test try. He had refined his skills with the K's no Yaiba technique and knew the basics well however he would need to get someone to teach him if he wanted to understand fully how to fight with his weapons of wind and increase his current skill level in Kenjutsu. He had improved the Jutsu so that he was now able to wield two blades at once. He received the idea by seeing the twin swords at the weapons store. He had named the new technique Suansha Heijin. His clones had also managed to create 47 attack formations. Naruto had looked through the list and chose five that he knew would be the most successful and decided to use them in future battles. Additionally he had finally mastered his elemental affinity. He fully understood how to implement the positives of the element and how to avoid wasting chakra. This had also helped him with his Yashikachu technique as he could eat it better now than before. Being caught by this overwhelming technique would definitely spell the end for his enemies. Also he was now capable of performing all the D-class and C-class techniques he knew with one-handed seals. The speed at which he performed the seals was now extremely fast due to the seal and his constant practice. 
Jiraiya wasn't joking when he said the seal affected every muscle in his body. He could carry out the seals within a second. His genjutsu defense had increased solidly and he was now confident that he would be able to deflect all genjutsu except the high level ones. However due to the mental link he could create with the Kyubi he realized that he could never get caught in a genjutsu since his demon inhabitant was immune to such techniques. The demon was more than capable of preventing Naruto from becoming trapped in one as long as the link was present however the question was whether the Kitsune would. Although an inadvertent development Naruto was exceedingly happy. The blonde had also mastered the Raisingen and was now capable of performing the Udama Raisingen with one hand. This gave the blonde two devastating finishing maneuvers. The exploding clone trials had also been completed with Naruto realizing what he had to do to create exploding clones. He had to create imperfect clones that didn't have their inner coils as developed as much as they should be resulting in volatile chakra which would make them explode. The Bunshin Daibakua was a technique that Naruto knew would be of great help to him due to his large chakra level and monstrous stamina. He had accomplished most of the tasks he had set out to complete at the beginning of the week only having to improve his Kenjutsu skills, chakra control and learning to eat the rest of his remaining techniques with one hand consequently he was currently trying to brainstorm fresh ideas. He was failing and he was scanning his brain as hard as possible to come up with new objectives. He raised his head as he sensed two chakra levels heading towards his position. The rigidness of his body instantly relaxed as he recognized who they were. In the distance two people had landed and were now heading towards him. A large smile spread across his face before he shouted, Ero Senen, Sunid Barkan. Jiraiya instantly grimaced at being called his nickname and began to mumble under his breath about the deteriorating respect that the youth showed their elders. Sunid simply smiled at seeing the blonde act his usual self. She had only seen the blonde once since he broke the news to her. At first she was highly depressed but she felt happier when she was in the Jinchuriki's presence as he always managed to cheer her up. They quickly arrived at the tree where Naruto was. Sunad walked up to the blonde and gave him a strike to his head. How many times have I told you not to call me that? Naruto began to whine while he smiled inwardly at seeing the older woman acting more like her customary self. Jiraiya simply looked at Naruto still seemingly upset at being called a pervert by the young genin. He had made it clear to him that he was a super pervert on more than one occasion, Gaki, what's with all the scrolls? The perverted Sanon looked at the various scrolls around the blonde boy which had writing scribbled all over them. Naruto sheepishly scratched the back of his head giving a small laugh, hey, I'm trying to come up with some new things to practice but I can't. He gave a death glare to the scrolls upon finishing his sentence. Sunid smiled at seeing his childish behavior. Jiraiya began to laugh at his student. His full-blown laughter didn't dee down and became even more maniacal in nature as the minutes passed by. Sunid irritated by the frog hermit's behavior quickly got up and punched him across his face launching him into a nearby tree. Naruto was the one to begin laughing as he saw his mentor soar through the air. Jiraiya quickly recovered and made his way back to the two blondes sitting under the shade of the tree. The perverted Sanon gave a steely look to his ex-teammate but instantly cowered upon receiving one back. Ahum, before I was rudely interrupted I was going to offer you some help. Sunad raised her eyebrow, by laughing like a senile old woman. Jiraiya ignored her comment and pulled out five large scrolls from his pouch. Each of the scrolls was a different color. They were colored red, blue, brown, white and purple. Before Naruto could ask what they were Jiraiya began to speak, Katen, Sutan, Dotan, Futon and Raten, the five elements. You have mastered your elemental affinity but it is good for a ninja to know a variety of skills as that will help increase his defensive and offensive power as well as developing his understanding of the elements. Over the next few weeks learn how to manipulate each of the separate elements and learn the techniques inscribed within the scrolls. Jiraiya handed the scrolls to Naruto before the blonde gave him an appreciative smile. Sunid didn't understand what was happening, wait, why are you giving him those scrolls? And why are you training so much Naruto? The blonde remained silent as a signal for his mentor to answer the Hokage's question. Before his passing, he plans on defeating the Akatsuki. Sunid looked at the blonde who was eyeing the scrolls in his possession. You don't have to do that. Live the rest of your days in peace. Naruto looked at the older woman and gave her a warm smile, I have to do this. It's my final promise, I won't break it. 
Sunit couldn't believe the words of the blonde. The younger boy's determination hadn't faded, if anything he had strengthened his resolve upon learning of his coming deaths. She couldn't help but smile at the younger boy and gave him a hug, I believe in you. And we'll be right there to help you. Jiraiya gave a touching smile and began to walk away to leave the training grounds but was stopped upon hearing his protege's words, where are you going, Ero Senen? Jiraiya laughed it off, I'm going to investigate what Akatsuki is doing. I'm leaving Kanoa for a while to meet up with my informant. I'll return in two weeks. Naruto nodded before Jiraiya waved to them and left. The remaining two blondes began to talk. Naruto kept the god I'm entertained as he began to talk and felt overjoyed by the fact that the defeat of Akatsuki by his hands was becoming more plausible as time went by. Sunad enjoyed the younger boy's company as she knew that she wouldn't be experiencing such moments after some time. She decided to leave the paperwork that she had to complete and continued conversing with the boy whom she considered a brother as she felt it more important to spend time with him. However what she didn't know was that her personal assistant Shizun was currently running over various places around Kanoa in a desperate attempt to find her in order to complete her duties. Before they realized the sun had begun to set and Naruto felt his stomach rumble viciously asking for food. The two walked into the city as Naruto went to his favorite ramen stand and soon had made her way back to the Hokage Tower. Sasuke was currently sitting in the deserted Uchiha district. The setting brought back painful memories of the past yet he found himself attached as it also helped him remember the times of happiness. It was the last remaining remnant of the Uchiha clan like him. The district was desolate giving an aura of eeriness but the black-haired teenager also recognized the tranquility in the air. He was presently seated in the backyard of his superior-sized dwelling whilst having his evening meal. The sun was setting leaving a red tinge in the clear sky. Even though he wouldn't admit it openly he was happy to have returned to Kanoa, although many shinobi were still distrusting of him due to his willing departure to Orokimaru. The path he had led after the fateful day of the Uchiha massacre was one of hate and blinded by revenge. The pain of having the one person he admired as a child and aspired to become destroying all he held dear and loved had emotionally driven him to the brink of destruction. Due to what was his sole reason for existence during that period of time he failed to realize that he had untied the strings around his carefully protected isolation and allowed new bonds to grow. The bonds he held with his team had strengthened over time until he finally began to enjoy life momentarily forgetting revenge as his sole driving purpose for living. The choices he had made in his life nearly cost him what was most important however he was saved from his fate by the one ninja who truly understood the Uchiha. His initial return had been met with some distasteful comments from the majority of the shinobi populace. However Sasuke knew that he had invited such suspicions upon himself due to his actions. Yet he also realized that, through all the disbelieving glares directed towards him, Naruto stood by his side defending him. He had nearly K the blonde on more than one occasion yet the genin still protected him from the glares and hate of the shinobi which he rightly deserved. The blonde was an enigma to the Uchiha at first as the only common bond they shared was of loneliness. When Sasuke had discovered his blonde friend as the jailer of the QB, the hate and hardships that he must have endured were more recognizable to the Uchiha. The words the Jinchuriki had spoken at their encounter at the Valley of the End had shown the sorrow and sadness that Naruto withheld from his comrades on numerous occasions. Why, Naruto, why would you go this far for me? The question he had asked Naruto on that day and the answer he had received was now a lot clearer. He realized that he had not lost everything as he still had his friends. Naruto stood by his side after everything that had occurred. He had never before had a friend. He was used to being admired and ogled at yet he only now understood how deep his bond with Naruto went. They have both suffered immense emotional pain and the tormenting isolation of having nothing. He was truly happy that the blonde had not given up hope on him although he wouldn't tell him that. Sasuke rose from his position on the soft grass beneath him before walking into his house. He placed the empty bowl of food into the sink deciding to clean it up later. He hadn't encountered the blonde at all over the past week and realized the awkwardness he displayed the last time he had seen him. Walking towards the front entrance of his house, he put on his sandals before walking out to find the hyperactive blonde ninja. XXXXXXXXXX
Shikamaru found himself walking through the streets of Kanoa with his common lazy demeanor on display tired from attempting to locate the number one most surprising ninja in Kanoa. He was enjoying surveying the clouds earlier during the day before he was interrupted by Ino. Shikamaru didn't bother opposing the girl's request, as he knew that he would end up doing it eventually. The only problem pertaining to this task was the fact that he scarcely had any time to himself due to the preparations for the upcoming tune and exams hence he treasured his cloud watching sessions. The shadow user was ultimately incapable of locating the blonde ninja. He had spent over three hours searching for the genin but was unsuccessful. Currently he was heading home as he had given up on tracking the blonde. He was about to turn the corner before he heard a rather large yell which sounded surprisingly familiar. He looked behind him to see Naruto yelling incoherent words with the occasional comprehensible few words about ramen thrown in. He smiled before muttering, so troublesome. He turned around and headed towards the blonde's direction. The shadow user walked up behind the blonde silently not giving any signs of his approaching presence. He had reached within a few feet of his target before the blonde spun around on his feet and shouted, Shikamaru. Shikamaru nearly fell over from the volume of the unorthodox greeting. Naruto, why do you have to be so troublesome? His comment didn't faze the blonde as he stood there with a dumbfounded expression, huh? The two looked at each other in silence, both confused momentarily. Shikamaru shook himself out of his stupor, ah, forget about that Naruto. Shikamaru walked beside the blonde as he headed towards the destination for his meal. Naruto, we're holding a gathering of friends in a few days. I was told to find and inform you to attend. Naruto gave a small laugh, and they asked your lazy, cloud-watching ass to come and find me. Shikamaru remarkably felt a little sting at the cloud-watching remark. Anyways, I've spent the last three hours looking for you. The Jinchuriki's eyes visibly widened at this, Nani. Three hours. How did you manage that? Shikamaru kept his lazy expression, it was troublesome. The Chunin then proceeded to pull out a piece of paper from his vest pocket before handing it to the Genin. It contained the invitation to the get-together as it was a private party for shinobis. It also had information on the location and time. The shadow user continued walking with the blonde, so, Shikamaru, which test are you the examiner for? Shikamaru instantaneously grimaced upon being reminded that he was going to be an examiner at the forthcoming exam. The written exam, so troublesome. Naruto laughed at him before patting him on his back, come on, all you have to do is stand there. You could just as easily look at the clouds though the window. Shikamaru inwardly smiled whilst his blonde friend attempted to cheer him up. Aren't you entering Naruto? The shadow user noticed the poignant look that spread across his comrade's visage but it vanished as quickly as it came. The demon container scratched the back of his head. Hey hey, I think it would be unfair if I entered. I'll probably take one of the later ones. I've got other matters to attend to first. The Nara was apprehensive of the blonde's statements. Naruto was one of the ninjas who valued the shinobi careers beyond anything else. However what piqued the Chunin's curiosity was what the blonde had stated last. He knew that Akatsuki was currently after him although he didn't know for what reason exactly. However he was sure that Naruto could compete in the Chunin exams as he was safe within the boundaries of Kanoa. Also from what he knew the Genin wasn't currently taking any missions with his team either. They continued walking until they finally stood outside of Naruto's favorite ramen stand. Naruto walked in and took a seat. The shadow user said his goodbyes before beginning to head to the direction of his home. He realized that he was now further from his home than he was initially, so troublesome. XXXXXXXXXXX. Zetsu was at present traveling through the country of rain hot on the trail of the Shichibi container. His infiltration into the country had been moderately trouble-free as the Akatsuki member was specialized in stealth due to his unique abilities to merge with his surroundings. The man who had a Venus fly trap structure enclosing his body was not personally known by any of the other Akatsuki members and his origin was a mystery to everyone excluding the leader of the organization himself. Not much was known about him except that he was the second member to have become part of the notorious organization. Zetsu separated himself from the ground before looking around the desolate plains that he was standing in. The area looked as if it had been completely destroyed. The only remains were that of shattered pieces of rocks and numerous craters. 
Zetsu continued to observe his surroundings with emotionless eyes, having trouble controlling our powers, are we? He quickly determined which direction his designated target had taken before once again continuing his hunt. XXXXXXXXXXXX. Naruto had just finished his second bowl of miso ramen and showed no signs of stopping anytime soon. Although unknown to others he enjoyed spending time at the stand for other reasons than just the food. This had been the location where he had experienced the first act of kindness towards him. His first meeting with the Sandime had been in this ramen stand when the old man had offered to treat the young blonde. Ironically this was also the place where the two shinobi would experience their final encounter with each other. Naruto remembered the last day he spent with the man who he looked towards as a grandfather. It was during the month of preparation given to candidates before the Chunin exam finals. Flashback. The Genin was excitedly gulping down numerous bowls of ramen. The training he had taken up with Jiraiya took a lot of energy out of him therefore he found himself enjoying the noodle soup even more than he would generally. Hey, old man, another one. The eccentric ninja s his chopsticks on the counter before he eagerly awaited the arrival of his next bowl. Ah, Naruto-kun. I see you're enjoying yourself. The blonde looked behind him to see the Sandime looking at him with a smile across his face. Hey, Ojisan, what are you doing here? The older man gave a small laugh at the blonde's hyperactiveness. I was just taking a walk. Mind if I join you? The blonde nodded his head whilst giving a glace towards the cook to see whether his ramen was cooked yet. The hockage of Kanoa took a seat next to the young boy before placing his order, I'll have a miso ramen. The owner of the ramen stand quickly replied, Hi, Hokage Sama, right away. The cook immediately took to preparing the meal for the most respected person in Kanoa. The Sandime drew his attention back towards the blonde to his left, so, are you training hard for the finals? Yeah, I've even got a great sensei. He helped me with my chakra control. But he concentrates too much on peeping at women. Sandime's eyes widened in recognition at this remark, Barker, Ero Senen. He chuckled as he realized the name the young genin had given to one of the legendary three. The blonde continued with his animated rant, you just watch me, Ojisan. I'm going to show everyone how far I've come. I'm going to win the finals. Then it's only a matter of time before you have to give your position as hockage to me. The Sandime decided now would be the best time to impart some of his wisdom onto the enthusiastic young ninja, Naruto. The Sandime's serious demeanor instantly caught the attention of the rookie Genin. Becoming Hokage, means putting the benefits of the people of the village before your own. This village has had some great leaders, the latest of whom met an early and tragic end. He looked towards the blonde who had a downcast expression. The old man continued, the shod I'm used to say, the comrades in Kanoa are parts of my body. The villagers believe in me, and I believe in them. That is what a Hokage is supposed to do. This is one of the first things he taught me. The blonde gave the older man his undivided attention, not everyone is capable of becoming hockage. Strength is not what determines the rightful person for such a position. The person chosen to lead the village must have a great heart also. The hockage is someone who must protect our country's ideals and our way of life. The blonde had an expression of sorrow as well as determination within his sapphire eyes, that is why I must become hockage. The Sandime turned to look at the boy upon his last statement, I've been alone for all my life. The pain, the anguish, and the sadness, all these things they hurt so much. The older man felt his insides jolt with pain as he knew the blonde didn't deserve such a fate. The ramen shop owner and his daughter Ayami listened to the blonde's mournful words. The genin sighed before continuing, I want to prove to these people, that no matter what they think I love this village and would protect it with my life. Protect the ones who love the village and believe in you. That is what I learned when reading about the Nadaim. The youth paused for a few moments before he continued, the pain I've suffered, I don't want anyone else to feel that pain, that is why, I must become greater than any of the hockages. The Genin's eyes were full of unbridled resolve. The ramen chef and his daughter wiped away the few stray tears from their face. The hockage looked at the boy filled with pleasure. He placed a hand on the young boy's shoulder, I believe in you Naruto, become a hockage like there has never been before. End flashback. Naruto had a large smile spread across his face as a single solitary tear trickled down his face before he abruptly wiped it away.
Hodgson, I won't fail you. I may not become Hockage, but I'll make sure that nothing happens to Kanoa. So, this is where you were. Naruto turned to see Sasuke looking at him. He adopted a huge grin across his whiskered face. I never expected you to be actually looking for people to socialize with. He gave a small laugh, you must be getting soft. The Uchiha smirked at his friend, whatever, Dobe, walk with me. The blonde nodded and got ready to pay for his food. He was stopped by Ayami who simply smiled at him and told him it was on the house. He gave her an appreciative nod and left. It was a peaceful night and most of the shops around Kanoa had closed for the day as it was nearing midnight. This added to the already serene atmosphere. The two newly reunited friends walked in silence neither speaking but rather enjoying their surroundings. Naruto hadn't seen his friends for some time due to the fact that he was so engaged with his training that he appreciated the fact Sasuke had come looking for him. Although, the two hadn't talked with each other very openly since the Uchiha's return Sasuke wanted to understand why Naruto went so far to return him. The two eventually ended up at their team's regular meeting place. Sasuke made his way over to the railing of the bridge before looking over the side into the water below. Naruto walked to the rail opposite Sasuke and sat on top facing toward the black-haired teenager's back whilst letting his legs hang haphazardly. You've been training. The Sharingan uses statement was simple and to the point. Naruto looked up towards the sky. You noticed, huh? The blonde's carefree gaze remained upon the dark sky of Kanoa. Kakashi-sensei informed us that you wouldn't be taking missions with us since you're still recovering. The stoic teenager looked into the water below which was extremely calm. Naruto scratched the back of his head, hey, that's not the entire truth but Kakashi-sensei doesn't know that. I'm probably not going to be doing any missions for another couple of months. Think of it as a long break. Sasuke wondered what would make Naruto take such a long leave of absence from shinobi duty. The minutes passed by in silence as both shinobis continued to observe the environment captivated by the calm night. Sasuke released a heavy sigh, how? The Jinchuriki looked towards his friend, how did you not lose hope in me? Naruto jumped off his railing before walking towards where the Uchiha stood and mimicked his position, even in the depths of darkness, there is still light, if one never gives up, there is always hope. The shinobis stared at the few fish in the water swim around carelessly, when did you become so wise? The Uchiha gave a sad chuckle, after everything I've done, you stand by me as if nothing happened. Sasuke looked at his comrade who was staring intently into the sparkling water below. Why, Naruto? Naruto looked up at the sky as the stars shimmered illuminating the night sky, because of you all, a smile spread across his whiskered face, I never gave in to hate. Sasuke looked at the blonde with slight shock as he never knew that the QB container came close to breaking. He realized now that his happiness was mask covering his true feelings. The smile was still on the genin's visage, before you all came along, I was beginning to lose hope, but then I found friends, those who acknowledged me, those who understood me. Sasuke felt the twinge of loneliness sting at his heart. He was familiar with his friend's ache. Our bond was one of the first ones I've ever had, when you left, so did a part of me. The Uchiha looked towards his blonde friend, the guilt clearly written across his face, I'm sorry, Naruto. The Jinchuriki looked towards the Sharingan user whilst a warm smile spread across his face. He placed his hand on his shoulder, everything is alright now though. That's what matters. Sasuke stared into his friend's eyes. He saw the genuine happiness yet it was concealing another emotion. He looked towards the sky and felt peace inside him after a vastly elongated period of time. Arigato, Naruto. He turned to walk towards the direction of his home but was stopped by the blonde's voice. What are friends for? A smile spread across his face before he continued towards his abode. Naruto stood there looking at the Uchiha's back as he faded into the darkness of the trees. Everything had seemingly returned to as normal as possible except he hadn't told him about his approaching death. He decided he would wait until he was ready. Looking up at the specks of sparkling lights in the sky, he closed his eyes inhaling the various smells and freshness of the air. The thoughts of Kanoa spread through his mind, the villagers with the duties, the innocent children playing and the shinobi as their protectors. He remembered the sandime and how he gave his life to protect what he loved. I understand Ojisan, Kanoa, everything, we are one.
That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.